Now, let us turn to our next session because we are going to explore the convergence of technology, mobility, and sustainability. Those three forces fundamentally reshaping how we move both people and goods. In our next panel, which is entitled Autonomous Mobility, Innovations and Sustainability in Aviation and Automotive, our panelists have promised us that they're going to dive into the evolution of electric vehicles, the rise of autonomous transport, and the growing importance of clean aviation. In the next few minutes, we will be welcoming our panelists onto the stage, and I'm delighted to say we are going to be joined uh, by three eminent guests. We have Omran Malik, who is head of Savvy for Abu Dhabi Investment Office. And we have Michael Stroband, who is president and CEO of Mercedes-Benz Cars in the Middle East. And their moderator, Alp Sapa, who is editor-at-large for Economy Middle East. Please join me on the stage, gentlemen. Round of applause, please. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's my absolute pleasure to be here today to delve into one of the most exciting frontiers of modern innovation, autonomous mobility, and the role how this is shaping uh, the future of aviation and automotive industries. Now, without further ado, uh, Michael, I'm going to start with you. Sure. Now, um, Mercedes-Benz has long been a pioneer in uh, integrating cutting edge technology into driving experiences. We saw it years ago with the W140 S-Class. It brought all sorts of things to the world of automotive. Now, today, could you share how AI, machine learning, and connected car ecosystems are shaping the next generation models? Sure, um, and good example. I think it shares the same bold vision that we in our company have since almost 140 years to build the most and desirable and best cars in the world. And that obviously goes um, then hand in hand with the, our ambition to be at the forefront of technology. Um, and uh, talking about AI, machine learning and connected vehicles are definitely strategic pillars in the forefront of um, future cars. I think best example you would see in our current CLA that got introduced to the world in, uh, in March in Rome. And that, from my perspective, is equipped with an absolute highlight of our self-developed onboard MBOS system. And that system is full of AI in every layer, including uh, Google, Microsoft, Gemini, Google Maps, uh, Microsoft topics, um, to in order to come to an entirely new user experience. So in the future, it's not only that you ask your car for answers or to recommendations, but the car will predict a lot of topics based on habits, based on the machine learning of what is your preferred temperature in the car? What is your music? What is your ambient light? How was about the last recommendations when you asked the car of give me restaurants or Italian restaurants for the evening, for example. It would ask you in a dialogue saying, how were the recommendations? Did you like it? And um, what was good? What was wrong in order to learn to give even better forecast or better um, um, and ideas in the, in the future? So you will see now an entirely new um, 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 system that from my perspective is the proof of the, the roadmap ahead for our company. Very interesting. And uh, Omra, I want to talk to you a little bit about Abu Dhabi. It's truly becoming the future of mobility here in the city. Autonomous vehicles and drones get closer to everyday use. And what regulations and infrastructures are needed to move from small trials to large scale, real world adoption of these exciting new technologies? Yeah, so uh, in Abu Dhabi, I mean, we're quite humble. We started back in 2021 with uh, testing and trials, whether it's across, uh, you know, areas like Sadiat or Yas or Master City. But in this year, in 2025, we're moving more towards how we can move from uh, testing, deployment and commercialization. So we are um, 
We have ITC members here who are looking at the safety and the regulators. We are collaborating with the OEMs. Uh, so, you know, if you think about it, if you think about ChatGPT two, three years ago, and the scale that it developed over the years, and who does not use ChatGPT now? It was not regulated because you need to you need AI to be scaled and deployed. So if we stay in that catch-22 where we're only confining it to testing zones, we will not be able to deploy it. But of course, we have to deploy it in a safe and progressive manner to ensure safety and security of the public. And we're considering many frameworks and models. One of them is deploying it uh, in a line region since Abu Dhabi covers 84% of the country. And upon successful completion of those tests and let's say in these areas, it can be brought to the city to commercialize. So that's where we are now. We are not, we want to move from just testing to enable commercialization of these vehicles and the Emirates of Abu Dhabi. Thank you. And uh, Michael, I want to come at you with a similar kind of question from the automotive side of things. Global race towards autonomous mobility accelerates. Where do you think the Middle East stands today in terms of infrastructure, policy frameworks, consumer readiness, and how is Mercedes-Benz positioning itself rather for the future? Sure, thanks for the question. I mean, first of all, I believe um, readiness starts with a bold vision. And there I see the region, especially UAE at the forefront. I mean, you have a very bold vision to convert 25% of the uh, driving uh, by 2030 into autonomous. And I think such a vision drives readiness, first of all, by large. When it comes to infrastructure, obviously there are very, very interesting use cases in the UAE and in the region for autonomous driving. I think no doubt about it. And I also feel the governmental bodies that we talk with are very supportive in adapting and creating the needful framework besides the technology that um, needs to be ready at the same time. When it comes to customer readiness, I feel it probably might take some time. Um, because I guess most of the customers and the people have never experienced so far an autonomous vehicle level three. I had the chance to do so and I must say um, I did it on German roads as you know we are the first OEM we got the license of level three in Germany up to 95 kilometers an hour and uh, it is a change because you've, you need to trust the vehicle fully. First of all, you start with the normal habits that you do today in all kinds of cars with level two uh, kind of driving assistances. So you're saying you're still there. You watch the traffic, you're watching what's left and right, and you're there if something happens. Well, in level three, Mercedes-Benz takes the ownership and responsibilities. So you have a newspaper on, or watching the news. And that trust to completely go away with your attention from the road and doing something else, that takes a little bit of... Uh, um, I think um, getting getting used to it and uh, that will take some time but with use cases that you have um, here in the country uh, a lot of them I think that adoption will be fast once um, you experience this yourself once you have the success stories you have the technology that you believe in and are able to trust then the, the vehicle and the ownership responsibility of the OEM who takes over. I think there'll be resistance by uh, the end user yeah, well, um, from, um, um, from Mercedes-Benz perspective, first of all, I mean, obviously we believe in the technology. We invest a lot in autonomous uh, driving. Um, we are proud, um, as I said, to be at the forefront in Germany and we're proud in, also in China. We're the first OEM. We got the level four testing permits for the now uh, busy streets of Beijing. Um, and obviously we're also in good conversations with uh, the Middle East and uh, in, especially in UAE, how we can integrate the UAE in future testing plans because we are still in the kinder shoes of the technology. Again, um, up to level three is, and, and four, I think we have a very clear roadmap ahead, but um, there's more to come um, also in the, in the future. When it comes to the consumer and customer habits, again, I think it's test driving, believing in the system, um, test kilometers without incidents help, and of course, also knowledge. And then there's the different systems out there, and we believe in a combination of LIDAR, electromagnetic topics, and camera all at the same time in order to be prepared for all kind of prediction I think is more knowledge you also as a consumer what half is that topic is more as you uh, tr tr trusting uh, the, the technology. And uh, Oman from your perspective 
AI is taking a bigger role in managing traffic, powering autonomous systems. How can we build public trust while keeping innovation moving, especially around safety, transparency, and ethics that come along with it? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. And touching upon uh, what was discussed earlier, um, I was uh, speaking to the Director General of the Integrated Travel Center here in Abu Dhabi, and we were discussing how we can have public trust in these AI. So let's imagine if we have all autonomous cars today at level five, will everyone ride on them? Not really. So one of the ideas we were brainstorming about is if you can see where the communities or families go during the weekends, let's say where the parks are and have the autonomous cars go around that area and have the public ride in them, of course, with the safety driver, slowly without a safety driver, and then they gain trust in those systems. So as industrials, we have to, you know, build that into the in the minds of the people to be able to accept it. It's not going to happen overnight. I see. And uh, Michael, I want to ask your opinion on uh, sustainability. It's, uh, it's not a buzzword anymore. It's, it's integrated into everybody's business. Now, with Mercedes-Benz's ambitious global roadmap towards electrification, carbon neutrality, how are these sustainable uh, targets being adapted uh, to the unique market dynamics and environments such as yes. the GCC? Yeah, I mean, our ambition uh, obviously starts global and we have our ambition to be carbon neutral and with all our fleets, our production supply chain um, by 2039, uh, including life cycle of vehicles, including production, sourcing of raw materials, uh, servicing cars and so on and so on, which is quite a bold uh, vision that we are having. And again, there's another topic that needs to be built uh, as a marathon over the years. Um, so far, I can update when it comes to production, we uh, reduced the carbon footprint by 75% since 2018. So we are on it. We are on a good track. And also in production, we have the clear um, a guidance and clear vision to be completely on renewable energy by the end of the decade of the 2030s. Um, and at the same time, we are converting the fleet. Obviously, when it comes to electrification, it, we do our homework in providing the portfolio. Um, so far, we have a decent portfolio from an EQE, EQA and uh, up to an Iconic G full electric. Um, there's more to come in the next two years. There will be firework of products. But again, the pace is determined by the consumer, country um, and infrastructure at the end when it comes to electrification. And um, for those um, topics, obviously, we are having a clear strategy also worldwide to reduce the carbon footprint by those electrification models, by hybrids that we offer to the to the markets. When it comes to Middle East, obviously, that counts uh, same for Middle East. We offer those products in this region as well. And um, at the same time, we do our um, share in our facilities in Jebel Ali, you know, our regional uh, head office is in the free zone and we in just installed a couple of years ago our solar panels and by now have a majority of our in, um, energy consumption done by renewable uh, solar energy. Thank you. And Domran, uh, 2030 and beyond, uh, how do you see autonomous, electric, AI-powered trans, uh, transport coming together seamlessly across road, air, sea, and what does true seamless integration look like in the UAE? So that's my mandate for the until 2030. And it is, uh, you know, the Savvy cluster, the smart autonomous vehicle industry, uh, which is under the Abu Dhabi investment office is looking after land, sea, air and robotics. When it comes to land, you know, we have the autonomous cars, we have the robot taxis, we have the unmanned ground vehicles, which can deliver food. There is a use case in the UAE uh, currently as well. You know, they have the drone for multiple uses. So what the government is working towards that it becomes a government as a as a platform. And then let's say, imagine this use case. And this, this is what we're working towards. As you fly into Emirates, let's say from Dubai to Abu Dhabi, and then by the time you land in a Vertiport, which is equivalent to a helipad, 
you have a robot taxi takes you home and by the time you reach home your groceries are there so that's what i see the future going to in terms of autonomy um michael my city has always been at the forefront of luxury as autonomous technology minimizes human involvement and i know you touched on it a little bit yeah. what does the future of a true luxury vehicle look like yeah sure um i mean first of all is our obligation to um definitely continue that path building on um, that we are blessed still to have one of the most recognizable brands in the world and obviously um now as a further ingredient we defined our third living room uh, concept so that includes for us now the vision in the future of um, the space time as well as emotional connect in the car um, and the, those aspects we feel and that is the vision what is this vision about um, our vision is to create a kind of a third living space next to the home and the workplace to relax to work to connect but also to get be recharged physically and emotionally and we believe that can be done um, again um, via uh, a perfect AI supported dialogue with the car habits the car, that the car knows you by far better and better and then can react on uh, personal preferences, personal needs and create kind of an, a, a safe space that you just feel home. And so far, um, I can update you coming here in the, uh, my electric G-Wagon. I feel we're on track. <laughs> it's a way to go. But I, I feel um, we are working hard on it and you um, um, hopefully also customers would feel that we put a lot of efforts in this homecoming feeling and the car supported obviously by modern technology. Wonderful. And gentlemen, we are out of time, but I do want to get your perspective on one final thing. Uh, what is the single most exciting opportunity when it comes to autonomous mobility as respectively? From... Uh... My background as a pilot is seeing uh, autonomous uh, air taxis over the city of Abu Dhabi, let's say by 2030 and beyond. Wonderful. Michael? Well, I'm, I'm as you know, more on the land side uh, rather than the sea or the air side. So obviously my biggest bet is uh, on use cases uh, around logistics, uh, good deliveries um, and uh, those topics where I think you can um, uh, decongest a lot in modern traffic with autonomous driving. And then we built on that for private uh, use cases uh, then um, subsequently. Well, gentlemen, on that note, thank you very much indeed for your insights. And may I, uh, could you join me in thanking my guests for their wonderful session? Pleasure to be here. Thank, thank you. you very much.